Big game, James Worthy, Robert Ori, Mike Bresnahan. Allie did the pregame show. She's at home watching. We appreciate that. Mike Trudell is uh, in the Bay know. Area. He's going to take care of all the post-game interviews. Hopefully we get some, guys. Yeah. Because the preseason is in the books. Lakers lose to the Warriors up in Northern California. They sit eight of their top nine guys in preparation uh, for the season opener, which is going to be on Tuesday here in Los Angeles against the Minnesota Timberwolves. Two players, though, that did get a lot of run, Bronny James and Quincy Oliveri. Uh, Bronny James had his best game, 17 points. Oliveri, uh, Oliveri had 22. Uh, big game. Let's start with, with Bronny. He got extended run and uh, did a nice job. I think as soon as he calms down and gets mm -hmm. all, some of the attention off of him, he just starts to relax. We talked about it pregame a little bit. Kind of unfair, uh, all the attention he's been getting. Uh, and I think one of the first times tonight he played a little bit relaxed. You know, didn't rush everything. Took the shots that came to him. And so, yeah, I mean, you know, preseason game, the outcome wasn't uh, what I'm sure the team wanted. <laughs> but uh, he got some run, and there you go. 17 points, 7 for 17. Can talk to Steph, too. Steph's giving him a little love. Uncle Steph? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, this is one of those games where you can, like, get, get these guys a chance Jeez. to come out and play a little bit, get a little rust stuff, you know. And also, when you when you watch guys that are trying to make a team in those first couple of games, you don't really get a chance to see what they can do. This is a chance to watch them against, you know, different competition. Because in practice, practice are easy sometimes because you know to play and you can either cheat on defense or what. Now in this case, you know, are you able to understand the game plan? Are you able to go out and execute? So I think this was a great way for the coaching staff to assess these guys to see who they're going to keep you know, or, or let go. Uh, Perez Brawny uh, talked to Trudell before the game, talked about how much he's learning and coming mm -hmm. to work every day and dream come true. And, uh, you know, tonight he got to play a lot of minutes and, and, and probably looked the most comfortable he, he has and, and yeah. it was a big part of it, so that was fun. Amazing how that works. You know, the, the more you play, <clears throat> the more comfortable you look and, and, and act. Your holds, but I feel like every couple years, you know, in the preseason, there, there, there's a guy that kind of pops, pops up on the radar that you just want to root for. Uh, he seems to be that guy, James, great personality. Uh, he did everything he could <laughs> when he was out there. Uh, he got buckets, he played hard, uh, had that smile. You saw him right there getting a picture with Steph. You know, he doesn't know if he's ever going to be on that court with him again. So, but, uh, but, I'm, but I'm rooting for, you, for a guy like that. So am I, Geeter. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's hungry. Okay, you can tell the guy's hungry. When he's on the court, you know, early in preseason, I know it's only preseason, but it means a lot to him. To him, it's as if he were playing in the playoffs right now. Because he's really, you see the great smile there. Uh, he, he has skills. He has a good shot, very offensive-minded. Uh, and, you know, he, I, I like him. I like, I like his game. Look at, you know, the comparison right there, preseason. Um, Oliveira has a lot of potential, in my opinion. And hey, by the way, Geet, the most important number there for Bronny, 35 minutes. I mean, that's, that's, that's a lot of PT right there, Rob. That's, that's impressive. And, and Quincy, his story just gets better and better. I mean, he played four years at Rice. He transferred to Xavier as a graduate student. All he did there was set the single-season record for threes. Now, he's um, not with the Lakers. Technically, he's on what they call an Exhibit 10. So he'll be with the South Bay Lakers. Lakers have no room on the, on the big roster. They got 15 full-time players, so to speak. But uh, a, fu a fun game for him as well. It's been fun to watch both those guys tonight, Keith. All right, let's talk about a couple of guys that will be playing on Tuesday now that the preseason is over. And Tuesday is upon us, guys, LeBron and AD. It was a great summer for both of them. They won gold for Team USA. Both came in physically and mentally ready for the season. Um, they had a great preseason when they did play. Big game, let's start with LeBron James, year 22. I mean, I know we've talked a lot about it in these last few weeks, especially on media day. But it's just truly incredible to see uh, the guy in year 22 look just like the guy was in year 16 and 17. So, I mean, the expectations are the same, right? Yeah. It's still LeBron James. Yeah, LeBron's going to be LeBron. We know what to expect and we know what he can do. I think his biggest challenge now is along with AD, is to see how they can ignite this team for 82 games. That's a big, big challenge right there. And win the games they're supposed to win. That's leadership. And sometimes it comes with the end. The coach will do all he can do. We talked about in the past, the games that they've lost, that they, they should have won. I think that's his biggest 
challenge right now is seeing if he can keep this team above water. Like Rob said in, pre, in, in pregame, you know, win the game you're supposed to win. You don't want to be looking back. And that's going to make it easier on him mm -hmm. in February, in March, in April. You remember they had to win some games. He had to play a lot of minutes. They don't want that. So his biggest challenge right now going forward, we know he's going to play well, is how can he lead this team and keep them above water, uh, you know, early in the season. For me, I, 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 it's so important to start this season off right because you want to put fear in other opponents. Mm -hmm. You know, especially when you're playing at home, you won't let them know. It's not going to be an easy task for you to come up in our house and win. And for me, that is the biggest key because, you know, last year the Lakers would get these leads, and it was almost like they didn't have them because next thing you know, they give them up. You know, that's all the mentality that you got to approach these games with. You know, if I know J.J. Reddy is probably going to be like, because he was in the commentary, so he see these leads evaporate. And for me, if I'm J.J., I'm saying, I sat, I sat there and I saw these. I don't want any of this partying, any of these antics when we're up, unless it's fourth quarter and we're walking off the court mm -hmm. as a win. And that's a sign of a mature team. That's a sign of a championship team. And for me, the mindset has to be right going in these first games. You get that mindset right, the body will follow. A.D. has looked so sharp in this preseason. I mean, 35 points last night. Looked like he was barely sweating out there. I mean, maybe this really is the year where the offense is finally transferred with LeBron's blessing over to A.D. I mean, LeBron started saying this a few years ago. Yeah, A.D., let him do the offense. Let the offense go through him. New coaching staff, now maybe it's finally the year where it happens. And if so, A.D. looks great. I mean, bump him up on your fantasy draft a few spots, Geek, because he's... Uh, He's top five player for sure right now. Yeah, I, I, I do want to talk about AD next. So, uh, listen, he had a huge year last year, um, played in the 76 games. Do you think he can, do you think he, 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 he can up that from what he did last year? Not, not in terms of the, the how many games, but in terms of the level in a new system with JJ? Yeah. Yeah, every year you Even come back. Year? Every year you come back, you want to you wanna up it a little bit. And with the offense being run, through him, I mean, yeah, I'd, I'd be looking for everything. I'd be looking for numbers, aggressive aggressiveness. Uh, you know, I would want the ball. I would, I would, you know, be like most big centers when they don't touch the ball. A few possessions, they come and let everybody know. I need to feel it a, a few times. So yeah, I mean, I mean, he didn't have anything to prove as a player, great player. But as far as achievement, he's. I think he's. His mindset is there this year. Yeah, I, I totally agree. You know, I, I look at, you know, a couple years ago when he had all those injuries. You know, people want to say this, but he came in the season not in great shape. Mm -hmm. Last year, he came in great shape. This year, he looks in great shape. And that's how you start the season now with no nagging injuries, which cause you to tweak other things and cause another injury on a different part of the body. And for me, I think AD has to go into this year mad. Mad he didn't win Defensive Player of the Year the last two years. Mad he hasn't won the MVP trophy because I remember when Shaq won the MVP. He went into that season mad that he hadn't done anything. He hadn't won a championship. AD has a championship. But you got to go into this season mad and out to prove something. And you don't wait to like, you know, oh, we're going to wait to All-Star break. No, you start it out now so you put fear in people's heart so you have those uh, AD-itis. ADI is mean when you coming in, uh, the, the guy who's supposed to guard him got ADI. <laughs> that means he's, he's sick. Like, also, he's got a migraine. Yeah, also he's sick and don't <laughs> want to play. Downgrade to the doubt. Yeah. And that's what you got to be, man. That's ADI what ADI has I to like be. that. Mm -hmm. ADI is. <laughs> so, Brez, something you've talked a lot about. Um, do, do, do you think they need help at that position? To well, yeah. Free it, up AD a little bit? Yeah, well, it depends on what happens with Christian Wood. Yeah. Okay, we're supposed to get another update on him in a couple of weeks. Um, he hasn't played much at all this, this offseason. Right now, it's just AD. And Jackson Hayes, you know, Christian Coloco, who the Lakers signed to a two-way deal, which will allow him to play 50 games at the NBA level. He has yet to be cleared medically by an NBA uh, medical panel. So, you know, got to wait on that, see if that happens. If you get him, fine, you're good. He's a two-way player, good shot blocker, good rebounder. Right now, it's just, it's just Jackson and AD. So, yeah. Um, yeah. But again, interesting to see. But again, yeah. there's 15 guys on the roster, yeah. 15 full-timers, so to speak. So there's really no, no wiggle room. You might say, hey, you know, Trade, trade one of those players, two of them, you know, get, get someone here. Hasn't happened yet. Hasn't happened yet. If you, and if you cut a guy, um, that, that guy still gets paid. It still counts towards the salary cap. Mm. And if you sign another guy, you're going to go into that second apron. Mm. So right now, the 15 is, is what you see. All right, let's head back to San Francisco. J.J. Redick is speaking with Mike Trudell in the media.
Yeah, uh, JJ, you knew it was going to be tough from a result standpoint, uh, just given Golden State's lineup and yours. But did, did you see some bright spots like in Quincy and in Bronny uh, still, you know, find a way to be largely efficient and you know get some shots off against their uh, basically their best defensive group, even with Steph out. Um, certainly, uh, there were some bright moments. Yeah, bright moments. Um, probably look at it a little more holistically um, and not individually. Um, you know, all those guys uh, that played tonight, we have had some great days with them in the gym um, throughout the summer. They've all had um, practices where they've really stood out. A number of the guys that played tonight were, were instrumental in the Milwaukee comeback. Um, you know, they, we collectively just didn't have it tonight. Um, you know, I, I thought, you know, I, I obviously can do a better job trying to get us easier baskets, but uh, yeah, just didn't have it. And um, I think uh, overall, I'm just. I'm encouraged by the the growth that we've had as a group, um, and and we'll be better. We'll be better. Uh, JJ, you spoke before the game about how you know the preseason's been a little bit uneven. As you get ready for Tuesday's opener, um, how much do you feel like you'll be able to uh, to you know, take out of all the stuff that you've tried to put in in the preseason um, versus just okay, now it's game one, got to get the result. Uh, you know, here's the specific game plan. And I know you go a lot of ways with that, but just curious. Yeah, no, I, 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 our group is is ready to play in the regular season. Um, we ha we'll have two practices on Sunday and Monday. Um, to sharpen some things up and to have a couple new installs um, for just def different defensive coverages, but um, our, our group's ready to play. We've, we've, you know, as a as a whole, we've we've built the foundation to go play a regular season game. JJ, to go from big picture back to focusing on tonight, Ronnie, after struggling, shooting the ball through the bulk of the preseason, had a more efficient night. And if you think back to the summer league, he kind of struggled offensively through the beginning of it and had you know, a stronger performance to end it. Um, just as a coaching staff, how do you feel about him having that as a building block as he goes into the next stage of the season? Yeah, I think for him and, and all our younger players, um, they're all... Uh, all the moments are building blocks, not not just the good moments. The the, the bad moments are learning opportunities. Um, you know, I think you have to have a level of uh, patience, a level of uh, optimism. Um, I, I am very confident uh, in the level of work that our young guys have had. Um, so, again, I think you know, for him, I'm sure it felt good to. I don't know what he have. 17 points? Yeah. I'm sure it felt good to have 17 points. I'm not I'm not even remotely concerned about that. It's not even on my radar. Like we're 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 trying to help him grow into a, a great basketball player. Um I'm I'm sure he feels good about it and he should. Uh, that's important for I think every basketball player that's ever touched the court to score points, but uh you know, some of the other stuff I, I've I've seen real improvement. And, and some attention to detail. Um, and I've seen that from all our young guys. So, yeah, I'm, I'm encouraged by all of it. JJ, um, one of the things you've spoken about, players have spoken about, though, is, is competitiveness and, the, and having that every day. Um, opportunities for playing time for some of these guys in the preseason is pretty limited. Did, did you feel like they, they were there competitively uh, enough today? Um, we talked about it uh, as a group at halftime. Um, I, I don't think the level of competitiveness was up to our standard, um, what we've tried to establish and what we've talked about, and frankly, what we've done um, in September and, and what we've done in preseason so, so far. Um, they know that. I don't, I don't need to belabor the point. Hi, yeah, yeah. Here. Um, I'd like to know your thoughts about Bronny in terms of what's happening off the court. I mean, um, all the pressure that he can receive. Uh, how is he managing that that part of the of the game because he is who he is? 
Um, yes, he's uh, a very grounded young man um, who is very coachable and has a very good head on his shoulders. Um, it's a couple conversations that I've had with him um, just about, you know, what it's like to be him. Um, and I'm... Hey, Lakers Nation. Welcome back to Lakers News Squad. Today, we're reacting to the recent post-game breakdown where James Worthy shared his thoughts on Bronny James scoring 17 points in the Lakers' preseason loss to the Warriors, 132-74. Even though the Lakers didn't come out on top, there are still some positives to take away from Bronny's performance. Let's break it down. Key takeaways, Bronny's best game. Yet, Bronny James got extended playtime, scoring 17 points and looking more relaxed on the court than we've seen so far. James Worthy pointed out that Bronny seemed to find his rhythm and wasn't rushing his shots, which is a great sign for the rookie. The more minutes he gets, the better he looks. Steph Curry's respect. Steph Curry even gave Bronny a nod during the game, showing respect for the young talent. It's always special when a future Hall of Famer like Steph acknowledges you, especially early in your career. Minutes matter. Bronny played 35 minutes, which is huge for his development. It's clear that the Lakers want to give him time to adjust and grow into his role, and from what we've seen, he's making the most of it. Quincy Oliver's impact. Another standout was Quincy Oliver, who scored 22 points. Although not officially on the Lakers roster, he's with the South Bay Lakers and is making a case for more attention. His journey from college to the pros is inspiring and adds depth to the Lakers' potential player pool. Even in a loss, there are so many positives for Lakers fans. Bronny James is finding his footing, and with his work ethic and natural talent, he's only going to improve. And let's not forget, LeBron and AD are ready to lead this team in the regular season, which kicks off soon. The pieces are falling into place for a solid year. What do you think about Bronny's performance? Could we be looking at the next big Lakers star? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this breakdown, hit that like button. And don't forget to subscribe to Lakers News Squad for more in-depth Lakers content and reactions. Let's go, Lakers Nation!